Drivers who switch and save with Progressive save over $700 on average, and those savings add up. Imagine what you could buy in the future. Hey, remember how 20 years ago I switched to Progressive? Well, now it's the future, and I used all those savings to buy this new hologram phone. Because, you know, it's the future, and everything is holograms now. So switch to Progressive and save big, because those savings can add up in the future. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customer surveyed who saved with Progressive in 2020. Potential savings will vary. Yo, welcome to the bar. Come on and pull up a seat. And open up your Bible, what a wonderful feast The living bread and we're discussing what it means for the streets The inner cities and the burbs and every person we meet It's where we tell us worldviews that we hear from world news In light of the scripture, we are here to serve you We're your source for resources To help you on your way as you battle mean forces This is for the people who can see the importance Of sound theology and the scripture that support it And this is for the truth lovers Biblically reforming, preaching Christ to the nations Yeah, welcome to the modern the Reformation, yeah. The Bar, Biblical and Reformed. Welcome everybody to The Bar. It's your boy, Dwayne in the building. Right back in here another Tuesday. Super excited, as always, be coming through your speakers, through your earbuds, wherever you listen to The Bar. We're grateful that you're listening. And I start the show the same way by thanking the listeners. Thank you guys for listening to The Bar, tuning into The Bar, subscribing to The Bar. We really appreciate it. Going into six years now, and we're just super grateful for anybody that listens to this podcast. And like I do every week as I bring you an awesome guest, this is a repeat offender. Um, <laughs> we, we've had him on before, and uh, I really, really enjoyed the conversation. Uh, so much so when I got the opportunity. Shout out to Lauren at uh, uh, Crossway, I think. Uh, or yeah, is it Crossway? Yeah, okay. Yep, shout crossway. Out, yeah, shout out to Lauren for uh for for always uh, sending me folks, and uh, when she sent me Mark, I was like, I know this guy. I definitely want to have him on. So uh, we have on today none other than my brother Mark. How you doing, friend? I am fine, Dwayne. <laughs> it's definitely a pleasure to have you back on the show, sir. Um, I always love to you know start off with those that may have missed the first time you were on here. Uh, just kind of give a, a, a background on yourself, a little bit information about you. I teach philosophy at Wheaton College. I uh, I think probably the most important thing about me is that I had a paralyzing accident when I was 17, falling off a Tarzan-like rope swing that left me partially paralyzed. Um, and that started me, I, I was a Christian before that, but that started me thinking deeply about my Christian life, being concerned to nurture my relationship with God. Uh, it led me into being a philosophy professor. And um, ever since, I've been thinking about these issues that have to do with suffering and have to do with our fellowship with God. Yes, sir. Good stuff. And, uh, you know, the first time we had you on, um, and I think you they even sent me that book, and and I, I remember... Um, just really, I, I was I was really just blessed by it, you know, just the whole idea of understanding, uh, you know, suffering. Because, you know, coming out of the charismatic background, man, is they don't talk about the suffering yep. part. <laughs> yep. Yep. They don't talk about the aspect, man. And uh, and and that that was that was just really good to just hear, you know, how uh, God still gets glory uh, in, in that in that stage of life as well. So. We're here because you got another book. Uh, uh, let's let's get into it, man. Like, give me a title and, and let's, let's start talking through it. This one is called Give Me Understanding That I May Live, Situating Our Suffering Within God's Redemptive Plan. Mm. What this book is, is the sick wall to the first one, Dwayne, which, mm -hmm. as you'll remember, was uh, called When the Stars Disappear, Help and Hope uh, from Stories of Suffering in Scripture. That first volume was dealing with um, the way that suffering affects us personally. Mm -hmm. This volume is explaining how suffering fits into God's whole plan uh, of what he is doing to bring people to himself in Christ. Mm. So one way to look at it would be, would be this way. We need two kinds of stories in order to live. We need personal stories that orient us in time to where we are, such as you and I right now. Well, you just right. gave part of the story. You and I right now 
are talking because Lauren ended up contacting you saying, Hey, right. would you like to have Mark Talbot on your show? I had told her, I really want to get back on the bar. And, mm -hmm. and so you and I both have a story that explains why we're here right now and that mm -hmm. orients us to life. But in fact, what people also need is a general story. Uh, and it's only in terms of the general story that we can get real hope. Now, mm. there's basically only two kinds of general stories out there right now. There are ones that are bottom up. In other words, they're naturalistic stories that say that we just came about by chance as matter right. ended up banging together in various <laughs> ways. And then there are top down stories which say that, in fact, we were created, that God planned us. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, the Christian general story it's a top-down story, right. and it has four parts. It has a part of creation, a part of rebellion, a part of redemption, and a part of consummation. What I claim in this second volume is that if we don't know that story, and especially the first and last parts, if we don't know that story, we can't live the lives that God means us to live. Mm. Wow. Yeah. No, I. that, that makes total sense. Um, just the the that that's the basis that's the the foundation of yep. uh of, of of where we are man so okay uh liking it so far man let's <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's, let's dive in a little deeper man what so um i, I always kind of like to get a little background um what like did you know when you wrote the first one there was going to be a, a volume two or <laughs> like what what was the lead up or you know just talk about that process yeah, yeah. Actually, it was going to be all one volume, and okay. in fact, it was going to include two more parts beyond mm. these first two, which it will still include. What had happened was that as I was working on the first two parts, I realized that I was going to end up with a 600, 800 page volume. And I thought, I don't want to hand that to people who are suffering. <laughs> And you'll right. remember that the first volume, yes. the text is only 99 pages long yep. because I wanted it to be short so the people who are suffering don't feel as if they're getting something that they can't possibly get through as they're struggling. Yep. Well, what happened was I talked to Crossway and I said, well, I'd like to split this into two parts, meaning the first two parts and the second two parts. They said, fine. I went back to them a few days later. I said, I really think it needs to be four parts. Mm. And they were a little hesitant, but then they agreed. So, gotcha. so actually, this has all been planned all along because I think without understanding both the importance of our personal stories, our mm -hmm. individual stories, and understanding God's general story, without those two parts together, we really cannot get properly oriented to our lives in Christ. Yeah, no, no, legit, and uh, and I'm glad you didn't hand a 600 page uh, <laughs> book to me. Um, <laughs> it it would have been like, yeah, it was a decent book. I made it some part of the way. <laughs> well, well, that, that's right, Dwayne. I mean, and and especially when people are suffering, they need right. fairly short answers. Yes, and yes. and that was why the first uh, uh, volume just dealt with the stories of Naomi and Job mm -hmm. and Jeremiah and some of the Psalms, because I wanted it to be something where people could gain hope by mm. understanding those stories. Right. But then right. once they've got that, then what I want them to do is to understand what I call the full Christian story of creation, rebellion, redemption, and consummation. Because particularly if we don't, if we don't think about creation and consummation, we're just not going to get ourselves properly oriented. Right, right, and that's—I mean—that's even that's the picture of the gospel, you know, yes. uh, uh, the the gospel message. Um, so is this is this one? Uh, I guess kind of a, a bigger story, or you know, like how how did you break it down uh, in this this volume? Yeah, I actually have individual chapters. The first one on creation, the second one on rebellion, on Adam and Eve's rebellion. The third one um, uh, falls out of the four titles, uh, Creation, Rebellion, Redemption, and Consummation. It's called suffering, because I don't mm -hmm. think most of us recognize uh, all the kinds of suffering that we go through. Uh, mm -hmm. To some degree, even when we're doing something like this, where you and I enjoy doing this, it's still work. And at the yes. end of the day, we're tired. Mm -hmm. And so what I wanted to do was to explain how in Genesis 3, after Adam and Eve had uh, rebelled by eating the forbidden tree, God, in fact, 
uh, cursed the ground with Adam in right. such a way that at the end of the day, he'd be tired having done the work he had done. That's a kind of mild suffering. And we're told that Eve, in fact, would go through great pain when she had children, and there'd always be some tension in her marriage. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to do in that third chapter was I wanted to make clear that we suffer whenever we experience something that is unpleasant enough that we would like it to end. Mm. And I don't, I don't know other people who, who've given that definition. We suffer whenever we, uh, uh, whenever we experience something that is unpleasant enough that we'd like it to end. And that can include very small kinds of suffering. Yes. Having a hangnail, being weary at the end of a day of podcasting, all those kinds of things, and mm -hmm. then really excruciating kinds of suffering. So what sure. the third chapter does is it tries to clarify what suffering is. And then the fourth chapter is on redemption and consummation. And you were right when you said a few minutes ago that uh, the first and the last chapters, creation and consummation, are the whole Christian story. Mm -hmm. What it really comes to is that if it were not for our Lord's bodily resurrection, there right. would be no Christian faith. That's right. Um, we, we had the disciples huddled in a little room for fear of the Jews. He appears to them. Mm -hmm. And it was his appearance that told them that the naturalistic story, among others, doesn't work, that it's mm -hmm. not the full story. We can think, we can think that the world just grinds on according to natural laws until we are convinced that our Lord really was raised from the dead. And then we realize that God is in charge of everything and that we don't need to fear anything in this life, even death. We mm -hmm. don't need to fear anything because if we endure and if we are the people that he means us to be witnessing to his resurrection and his life on earth, if we are that, ultimately uh, everything will come out right in the end. Gotcha. I love it, man. I love it. That that's so true. Um, the, the, the bodily resurrection um, is the it's the moment. It's the stamp in time. You know, it's, yes, just, it's the yes. moment in, in history where, you know, God is pretty much presenting itself like, hey, I'm, like you said, I'm, I'm greater than death. Like, <laughs> right. Know, right. I'm, I'm, <laughs> that's yeah. amazing. Never yeah. thought about it like that. <laughs> well, well, what I've found, Dwayne, is I've tried to deal with this is that I don't think most of us uh, put the resurrection uh, at the forefront of our faith in the way that the first Christians did. You read your way through Acts and you realize that again and again and again and again, the message is Jesus and the resurrection. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and so we need to read 1 Corinthians 15, where Paul goes through the reasons for believing in Christ's resurrection. We need to read all the accounts of his appearing to the disciples after his death at the end of the Gospels and ask God to help us to become so convinced of that, that it is as much a part of our daily way of looking at life that Jesus was resurrected from the dead as anything else. Right. And if it is, then we will be the bold witnesses we are supposed to be. Exactly. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Good deal. Good deal. So, um, man, I, I like the way you, you broke that down. Um, I, I want to go back to the, the chapter you mentioned about suffering. Um, yeah. You know, even, you, you talked about a hangnail, um, you know, I stubbed my pinky toe like a couple of nights ago. And I promise <laughs> that was some major suffering. <laughs> <laughs> no, you much know? worse than one would think. <laughs> right, right. It was it was like like I, I talked about it for a couple of days. I'm still talking about it. That lets you know how, <laughs> how bad it was. But so for those man that that um, that I guess maybe never labeled something like that suffering or maybe even never looked at you know that being a form of uh just uh just what how did you address that how did you like frame that so that you know it fits in and people just don't feel like a oh woe is me kind of thing yeah yeah it seems to me that um suffering of any kind and degree 
is the way in which God is graciously trying to speak to everyone, not merely mm. to Christians, but to everyone in such a way that they recognize that something has gone wrong in the world mm -hmm. and then they seek an answer. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen Jobes, who taught uh, New Testament, well, actually Old and New Testament at Wheaton for several years, um, uh, in, her, in her commentary on 1 Peter, mentions that uh, suffering is just not natural to the world when we think of the way the world should be. Mm -hmm. She says it's natural to the world, given what's gone wrong in it, but it's not natural to the way that the world should be. And she thinks we all know that. Mm -hmm. And I think that we do. And so it seems to me that what happens is that when we suffer, and if we if we realize that there are all these degrees of suffering, like you're stubbing your pinky toe, right. um, uh, that, that makes you stop because the pain is such that you... Um, find yourself thinking in terms of it. C.S. Lewis talked about the way that um, a bad man who is unrepentant um, uh, is in the worst situation and that the pain that God brings into the world gives the bad man at least the chance to rethink things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that if we think of this whole range of suffering from the most mild suffering to the worst as being God's way of trying to get us to rethink what the world should be like. And then if we think, Dwayne, about the fact that the world was pristine, when God made the world, there was no human suffering. Right. Quite often, even Christians make the mistake by getting bogged down in the two middle parts of the story. In other words, rebellion and redemption. Quite often, even Christians will find themselves saying, well, why did God make a world where there is all this human suffering? To which the answer is, he didn't. Mm. He didn't make a world with all this suffering. The suffering came out of Adam and Eve's rebellion against God by wow. being willing to eat from the forbidden tree. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to do is, in a sense, normalize uh, our uh, recognition of suffering in such a way that then we say, you know, this is God's graciousness to everybody, Christians and non-Christians alike, and trying to awaken them to the fact that there's something wrong here and to set them on the path of figuring out what's wrong. The gospel is the answer to that. And right. the gospel is the only really, I think, adequate answer to that. Right, right. Gotcha. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, man, um, before before I hit the break, because this is so good to me, um, I think about um, like losing a loved one uh -huh. and how that 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 happens. And for and I've, I've witnessed it. It set people on a path to salvation. Like, right. you know, like we're talking about, like a, a, a incident happening, uh, not necessarily maybe to you physically, but emotionally. Yep. yep. Um, you know, so I guess is that kind of in the same lines of what you what you're talking yep, about yep it seems to me that it can be either our personal suffering or it can be something that's happened to someone else that affects us psychologically and spiritually um, um some people i think might even just kind of well take souls and eats and souls and eats and came to have his strong sense of god's presence because of what he suffered in the gulag uh the fact that here he is in soviet russia and He's being treated as if he's a cancer patient when mm. he has no cancer. Um, uh, that is what brought him back to God. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. How all that ties together. So right here, uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hello, friends. I'm Billy Rice host of the brand new podcast called Five Minute Theology, a podcast that presents big truths in a bite-sized way. Designed for the new and growing believer, Five Minute Theology is a weekly podcast that offers essential truths of the Christian faith in a clear, concise manner. In every episode, we will explore a specific doctrine of the Christian faith from a Reformed Baptist perspective in a way that's easy to digest and apply directly to your life. So whether you're at home or on the go, let 5-Minute Theology be an excellent little dose of encouragement from the deep truths of God's Word. I pray this podcast is a blessing to you 
And may you always see that our God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. For the truth, I'm Pastor Billy, host of 5-Minute Theology. Have a blessed day. Right, we're back in here with my good friend Mark. Mark, this is uh, the podcast where uh, we get into the bar signature questions. You've already answered these questions, but hey, something may have changed since the last time we've talked. Uh, so the first signature bar question is, what kind of music do you listen to? <laughs> and the answer, like last time, is I don't get to listen to much. I play some classical music on the piano and and i i love some of the really great classic hymns and mm. some of the more popular christian music but i just don't get to listen to much gotcha gotcha yeah didn't change much <laughs> <laughs> all right sir uh, next signature bar question is what book or books are you currently reading um right now i'm reading a book by vern poitras on the word of god that's really a remarkable book in explaining how important words are to our lives and the fact that we can only understand that we have language in terms of the Trinity. Mm. Um, uh, so that's one of the major books. I'm reading a fair amount of Augustine right now because I'm teaching a course on Augustine in the fall at the college. And so I'm rereading his Confessions, which everyone should read and mm -hmm. several of his other works. Augustine was just wonderful in uh, understanding the grace of God as the only thing that can bring us back to God and Christ. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, last thing is your bar question. This probably hasn't changed either. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what podcasts or sermons do you listen to, if any? <laughs> Uh, not many. Uh, we've started a new podcast, When the Stars Disappear, and okay. it takes up all of every yes. Monday of mine just getting it ready. I, I, for the first time, recognize how hard this is, Dwayne. <laughs> I, um, I love you. You got a new respect for what I do. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's that's right. That is awesome. Well, I'm I'm glad you plugged that, man. I'm gonna have to check that out uh, for sure. Um, really, really awesome having you on, brother. Uh, like always. Um, want to give you an opportunity before we get out of here, uh, let people know uh, when and where they can find the book um, and, and all of that good stuff. And then any words of encouragement before we finish up? Okay. Uh, the second volume is Mark Talbot. Um, uh, give me understanding that I may live uh, situating our suffering, our personal suffering within God's redemptive plan crossways published it they by the way have a sale on it it's supposed to be 22 dollars but in fact they'll send it sell it to you for something like 1590 plus give you a free ebook if you just sign up for what they call crossway plus uh and nice. of course it's available anywhere else amazon and all those places awesome um, i might mention that if you go to solid ground christian books that he will give you both volumes for 22 bucks solid okay. ground christian books so that's that's this particular volume. The place to reach me would be christianscholarsfund.org. All one word, christianscholarsfund.org. Most of my stuff is in fact on that website. Um, if people really want to, they can they can uh, email me directly at mark.talbot, T A L B O T at Wheaton, W H E A T O N dot E D U. Awesome. 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 We'll definitely have uh, links to the show notes. I'll get you to send me those by email so I can make sure we copy them in, uh, especially the one where they get the two volumes. I want to give them options, Yeah, uh, you know, as far as getting the book. So, Mark, thank you again for coming on the show. Super, super honored and uh, and, and had fun like we always do. Um, really can't wait to uh, check out the new book and uh, make sure when the other ones come out, you reach out to me again. We bring you back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will. Don't worry, Dwayne. <laughs> Sounds good, my friend. All right, folks, to the Bar Podcast listeners, make sure you guys check out the Bar Podcast every Tuesday, your favorite podcast. Go to thebarpodcast.com. 
you want to pick up some bar gear go to bargear.com if you want to check out the podcast and in the network there's a network tab on the page make sure you check that out and until next time you guys god bless and we are out